hello everyone this is smruti welcoming you to qa automation classes so hope you guys are doing good so today we are going to start on the bdd framework architecture i'll be explaining what are the different components we are going to use and what will be the framework architecture and how the flow will happen right so without wasting further time let's get it started so let's go to whiteboard so i have already uh, drew this uh, diagram so that we can save some time so in the bdd framework setup so what exactly we're going to have so first we'll have our maven right we'll create a maven project and that maven will have our pom.xml right and in pom.xml we'll keep on adding all those dependencies and the plugins whatever is required right so and in that pom.xml also we'll have the information about our cucumber runner right so how in our uh, tdt style of the framework we had pom.xml and there we used to give our testng.xml file right that is a suit testng.xml dot uh, testng.xml file right and in that suit uh, testng.xml file we had the different different uh, class right so those are nothing but your test classes right so similarly here we don't have that suit.xml file because um, here we are going to go with the cucumber runner right we'll have a runner class and that runner class will in turn have uh, been configured with the uh, list of the features right so we can specify a particular feature file and or we can have a wildcard over there we'll say okay just go and find all the feature files available in this location so cucumber runner will have information where all the feature files are present okay if you want to run a particular feature file you can specify that name or you can go with the some wildcard matching where it will fetch all those features right and then in cucumber runner also we have to configure about the hooks okay so what kind of the hooks so how we have the before annotation and after annotation in test engines right so here also we have at the rate before at the rate after annotations are there right in the hooks uh, basically we are going to do the three things so one is uh, setting up the browser driver let me zoom it a bit so sorry so here we are going to set up the browser driver and then we are going to tear down or quit the browser driver and we are going to take the screenshot on the test execution failure when there is a test execution failure or the test script fails that time it's going to take the screenshot and again uh, this cucumber runner will be configured for the reporting okay so we'll have uh, all different shots of the report will generate we'll have the html report we'll have the pdf report we'll have json report we'll have xml report okay and uh, when we are running in parallel also that uh, thread execution report also we can have okay so i forgot to mention here but thread execution report also will have okay and then this hook right so we already in, uh, discussed these hooks are going to perform three things one is the setting of the browser driver and tear down method or the quit the browser driver and take the screenshot on the test execution failure but this hook in turn will call the browser factory to set up the browser driver right setting up a browser driver is mentioned inside the browser factory and in the browser factory we have setup browser method right and this setup browser method uh, will in turn use thread local and thread guard concept right so this thread local and thread guard concept as you have gone through my older tdd framework design there also you have seen the use of the thread local and the thread guard okay they will be mostly used when running the test cases in the parallel with the multiple thread right so that is the use of the thread local and the thread guard we'll look it into in, into detail when we come to that parallel execution part right and uh, this browser factory uh, while initiating the browser it will read the config.properties file in config.properties file we are going to have our uh, application url and for the uh, initially we can also have our browser information but going forward we'll parameterize it so that while running from the command line we need to pass that browser information so initially the browser information will be in config.properties file so that this browser factory will also connect to the config.properties okay so let's see so in the cucumber runner if you come to the cucumber runner again in the cucumber runner we completed the report part we completed the hooks part now the cucumber runner i told we will have the list of the features right we say either this particular feature you have to run or we can with the wildcard we can say you run all those features we have to give that location right and each feature what it has right so since we have seen the earlier classes we have seen in those classes like uh, each feature will have the corresponding scenarios mentioned inside it right in the form of the given when and then right and this are nothing called this given when then okay for each of those lines will have the corresponding step definitions okay so we are going to have some step definition package and inside that we'll have the step definition classes okay so in that step definition right uh, 
uh, we will uh, just this is binding the feature file with the page class actually right so let's say the actual operation there is a login process right so user logs into the app, application is the scenario right so first given user is on the home page that means user navigates to the uh, login page or home page whatever so that is uh, login page related uh, method will be there right and similarly user uh, enters username and password right so those two uh, will be also part of the login page because in the login page only that username and password uh, text boxes are available right so that will be part of the login page class right so similarly the step definition when there are the multiple page classes are involved the step definitions will access to all those page classes whatever is required right so after it is getting access to the page classes right and uh, it will execute that particular piece of the code right so let's say let's say when user enters username and password and user cl uh, uh, clicks on the login button right so those uh, step definition will have one login step definition and in that login step definition we'll have that login dot uh, login page login page class right here uh, we'll have write the actual code to enter the username enter the password and click on the uh, sign in button or login button and then will verify whether user home page is displayed or not right so that is another page class so this step definition will interact with the login page class as well as the user home page verification part right that also it will interact and also this step definition as well as this page classes right so these two will in turn con uh, connect with the log4j we are going to use the log4j for generating the logs right so as you have seen in our TDD framework also we have also used this log4j right so by the help of the log4j you will generate your log files in some format and that log file will help you to understand how the application flow is also going right at what which step from which class is getting executed right so and after all the executions are done as i have told you this cucumber runner we have the reports con uh, configured and through here through this reporting section we will get the html report pdf report json report xml and uh, for the parallel execution also if you are running our uh, uh, all the test cases execution in the parallel with the help of thread local and thread guard right so those related information also will also come there so we'll see that in great detail when we go into the detail about the framework development right so initially we might not have the exact architecture but by the end of the all the sessions you will see this is the exact architecture that is we are going to follow so if you uh, if you are asked in the uh, interview right so can you explain your btd framework this is what exactly you can directly explain to the interviewer right and uh, and if uh, okay so and if you guys have any other questions just i will ask you to put them in the comment section i'll get back to you as soon as possible this is overall the entire framework architecture okay you guys can take a screenshot of this one and uh, start practicing it and if you guys uh, don't understand anything here those things will get cleared when we start implementing them in the actual framework development okay so that's all for this class guys if you guys are really enjoying i'll request you to like uh, the content and subscribe to my channel and if you have any questions please put them in the comment section i'll get back to you as soon as possible and please do keep sharing these uh, videos with your friends and colleagues and uh, that's what like uh, it, it gives me more motivation when i uh, see more comments and we we'll get the more number of uh, subscribers right it, it also keeps me motivated to bring up such informative videos okay so yeah we'll meet in the next section guys thank you everyone bye bye